here on all the various KSL Sports platforms, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Matt Biamonte, Mitch Harper, uh, the practice field behind us, on the observation deck here at the football facility. Day one in the books, and it felt good to get our eyes on some actual football. Being with Loud in, we watched an 11 on the sports. Let's just start there, your observations from what we saw. We saw all three quarterbacks, a lot of rotation at running back, and, and across the field, a lot of rotation, but what we'll stick out to you? Yeah, I think first off, it was great to be out here. Uh, you know, obviously we're in person. The practice field's right behind us. So the fact that we were just here a year ago at this time, players were wearing face shields to prevent saliva from getting to other people. So it was nice to be here. You know, we're vaccinated. So great to be here first off. Uh, but I think that one of the big things that stood out to me was obviously the first quarterback that we saw in the observation period was Jaron Hall. He was the first quarterback to take snaps. And that Jerry Hall looked pretty dang good, Matt. You know, it wasn't anything perfect, but you saw the arm strength. You saw the big talent that he has going through the air and a little bit on the run. Uh, Jerry Hall's big time talent. So he was the first quarterback coming out of the gates in the team portion that we saw today. We do have to remember, because I told myself this dozens of times, this was scripted. Yes. This in the next four practices, there is a script that they had worked on that script all summer long. That won't change until practice number six. So it was in the plans all along for Jaron to get the first work in the 11-on-11 period at the end of practice. But what you said, Mitch, is dead on. And, you know, I, I did a deep dive recently, and I put this on KSLSports.com, going to Jaron Hall and how he played in 2019. And it, what we saw then is what we saw here. There were no underthrows. The ball was a lot of spirals, a lot of velocity, accurate. Final, final pass of the scrimmage was a deep ball uh, that was broken up by Jaron Vickers. Yes. But it was... It was it was a really a great defensive play. It wasn't underthrown in my estimation. It was just a good defensive play, but the general of great highlights, I think, what I would agree, was hands down in that opening drive of 11 on 11, which we saw uh, Jaron Hall uncork a 50 yard yeah. bomb to Neil Powell down the right side for a touchdown. Yeah, it was in the, if you look on the screen, like in that back corner back there, it was a, it was a nice ball. It was a beautifully thrown ball. Neil Powell made a great cap, a grab. I think he was the star, he being Neil Powell. I thought he was fantastic today. Uh, any notion that, you know, Puka Nakua, Samson Nakua are going to show up and bench Neil Powell? And again, uh, I think, you know, folks like myself maybe need to take that advice. And welcome, think, welcome on board. And think, and think again, <laughs> because all of it, I thought, you know, Puka, Samson, going to run the fight into your top three. No, Neil Powell, uh, much improved. And we talked about it in June with Pepe Sitake. Uh, he even said probably the most underappreciated player in the program. Well, you probably need to start appreciating him more after the performance that he had today. He looked really good in the team portion. And let me jump in here about Neil. I had a chance to catch up with Neil a little bit at the interview on Cougar Sports Saturday. It was this coming Saturday. Lost weight. So uh, that was his big focus in the offseason, was slimming down, being faster. I think we saw that on the field. He says he's the best he's ever felt. He acknowledged, hey, it was hard to not go in and out at 11 p.m. Uh, that, is <laughs> that is difficult. That is difficult. The portion's down, but it's hang off in a big way and, and uh, easily to stand out uh, so far through day one. Yeah, this is Mitch Harper, Matt Biamonte, KSLSports.com, and KSL News Radio. We'll be doing these throughout BYU football fall camp, especially the ones where we're able to go uh, in person. So BYU's going to have a little bit of a hybrid model where we'll come in person. There will also be some media availabilities where they're on Zoom. So kind of adapting to today's climate, a little bit of virtual, a little bit of in-person. So anything that we can get. It's not like the old days where you get to show up, ride on the Bell's golf cart, like I was talking about on Cougar Tracks. But, hey, we still appreciate any sort of access. Uh, staying with the quarterback battle, and you can share your comments on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you're watching. We appreciate that. Uh, share your comments and questions, and we can get to those here in this live stream. Uh, the quarterback position, the number two QB, was was uh, was Jacob Conover, true freshman. Now, it was interesting, though, when you kind of look into the details, speak some of the personnel around him, uh, it felt like maybe second and third string guys, whereas when Baylor Romney, the third quarterback, at least in the team portion that we saw, he was more aligned with the first-team offensive line, what we expect to be the first-team offensive line, uh, like Jaron Hall. So maybe you read between that, uh, Jaron Hall, maybe Baylor Romney's top two guys, maybe they Dominus guy at the end because that first drive with Jaron was with the ones. Yeah. And then he took the sec part of the second series with uh, the twos and the threes. And so it was kind of a, a good mix all around. It, hard to take anything away from it other than the performance. Uh, I, I thought Jaron Hall was in charge. It's just in terms of accuracy, hitting guys on time. I don't think 
plays for Jaron Hall, but a long way to go in the quarterback battle. Yeah, we got a question from uh, Biancio. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, he asked anything about the running back. A first RB, of course, Tyler Allen here. I didn't see much of him in the team portion from what memory serves. Uh, we did see the, a lot of Lopini Katoa. Uh, Jaron Hall targeted him in the intermediate game. Lopini kind of was true to form where he is going to be a big threat, I think, in the receiving game once again for BYU. I mean, as, as he should be because you saw that catch in both of them. He was fantastic. The third running back, which Aaron Rodgers talked about today to the media, the third running back battle uh, is a big position battle within the offense. And the first guy that we saw after Tyler, after Lopini, was Palau Rapati, a.k.a. Rapati. Uh, so, and yes, if you're wondering, seeing it in person, the Cavs, I was shook. I was completely shook seeing the Cavs. The body was pristine. You're overstating and we're too far away. No, I, I had the binoculars on. I had binoculars on, so that's all I was watching. Matt's like, what a play by Jaron Hall. I'm like, oh, I, I just saw Heathley Rapati's Cavs. That's all I was cared about. Uh, Palau Rapati looked impressive. Uh, he, he's going to be someone that's contending for that number three spot. But also, Myles, Miles Davis. Uh, I was talking about him uh, back on Saturday during my lazy river ride down in St. George. I think I'm high on Miles Davis. We saw a little bit of into it. But uh, maybe if you're looking again at day one and reading between the lines, uh, Palau, Keithley, Rapati might have that insight back at RB3. And he nearly made, it wouldn't have been the best play of the day, but he almost made it the second best play that the media saw. Keep in mind, he only saw 15 minutes of majority of the practice we did see, but there was a nice wheel route that Jaron Hall was able to find. Yes. Probably a good 40 or 45-yard pass. Did not keep his feet in. Steve Clark came running down, out of bounds, but uh, an accurate pass, a great catch, just didn't get the feet in. But, yeah, that was noteworthy that we saw a lot of Rapati in the media observation. Yeah, we did see a lot of him. Uh, uh, the starting offensive line was interesting, at least. But we assume, again, you got to kind of assume here, because they, they change things up every day a little bit, maybe throw it off with the media to keep that in mind. Uh, the offensive line, kind of a storyline coming in. Uh, I think the starting group is going to be pretty good. Uh, but I think there's some questions about the depth, the second and third string units, and how deep does this O-line go? Uh, the first snap that we saw on the team portion in the observation period, Joe Tukwafu was at guard. Uh, Connor Payne was in the second unit. Just something to keep in mind there. Uh, Blake Freeland, Harris Lachance, you caught up with Blake Freeland. I mean, you're talking about in six, eight uh, tackles. They're going to protect whoever the quarterback's going to be. Uh, that's a nice luxury to have. I still have some questions a little bit with that depth. Because you saw the second unit, Matt, on the offensive line. They struggled against the first string defensive line when Jacob Conover was in at quarterback. They struggled mightily, I, I thought. Uh, you know, and, and rightfully so. I mean, Tyler Batty, Lopa Leatawa, they look good. And there were some high snaps from the offensive line. So, uh, second unit. So, that's got to get cleaned up. But, uh, you know, that's going to be a position of area to, to watch in terms of the, the second string. One guy, like Freeland, another guy you'll learn coming towards Saturday. This upcoming Saturday from noon to 3 on KSN News Radio 1.7 FM. He says, look out for Brady Kime. That's, I mean, he's got the physical tools. He's the dominant. And he says that he is uh, mightily improved. He's been really impressed. Call him a beast. So maybe that's a guy his camp unfolds. We'll see him crack that too deep, that tackle. You know, it's interesting, Brady Kime not coming in September. Two years ago, uh, Eric Mateos, the former offensive line coach, I was talking to him. I think it was in spring practice. And in Mateos' first practice, he's like, keep an eye on this uh, Brady Kime kid. I'm like, oh, like, you know, what about him? It's, the last name sounds familiar. And then I realized, oh, it's a legacy kid. He's not 260. Now he's 308, six foot seven, six eight. He's massive. Uh, you know, I don't know what they do down here at BYU. These six, seven, six, eight men falling off trees on the offensive line, but it's a nice luxury for Daryl Funk and this offensive line unit to have. Uh, another guy that stood out to me, Matt, and Aaron Roderick highlighted him as well to the media, Gallon Holker. He was targeted, I think, two or three times. Conover, with specific. Yes, with Jacob Conover. And Aaron Roderick said, Gallon Holker looks like he never left from the mission. And I mean, Holker, he's probably your number two guy. And, you know, I had some questions coming in at tight end, like who was going to be that number two. Maybe there was some Bentley Hanshaw, who we talked with Steve Clark at Media Day about as one of the most improved guys in the weight room in the strength and conditioning program. But Holker, he's big time. I mean, I think I'm, I'm, I'm knee-jerk reaction moment here, Matt. I'm going to get on the hype train here. Isaac Rex, Dallin Holker, this is going to be the best tight end tandem 
since George and Pitta. I don't think that's a stretch because there was a stretch there with Hyden wasn't used much, but it could be even better than those guys. I think it could be maybe in the Tula Mealy, Chad Lewis realm. We saw Chad Lewis up here in the practice field today. I think it's going to be a dynamite uh, tight end group. I'm so excited for that. And speaking of tight ends, and, and please, everything I'm saying here and what you're saying, do remember it's this is day no, one. It's 15. fact. You remember that. 15 minutes of up to what I'm about to say, though, um, you know, I need more sample size, yeah. but it appears that we're going to see more tight ends out wide. We yeah. saw Dallin Holder, Isaac Rex, Lane Lunt comes to mind, not lining up in a three-point stance and then running routes. We saw that quite a bit in the Jeff Grimes era. I didn't see it as much today. Now, I'll keep an eye on that as camp unfolds, but maybe we're going to see more of that Pitta and George style where they're in that slot position. Yeah, it's a great luxury to have. And, uh, you know, I asked Aaron Roderick, what's the deepest position that he has in the offense right now? And the first position he said was tight end. He then also said the wide receiver room, and I think the wide receivers right now below us, uh, some of the receivers have worked on the jugs. we got Chris Jackson, Terrence Ball, also I think Thomas Gunther as well. So get some extra work on the jugs. But, uh, you know, the wide receiver room's talented. We didn't, if memory serves right, maybe you saw Matt, but I saw Puka Nakua and Samson Nakua on the sideline. They were there. Uh, did you see them participate at all? Samson made a catch. Okay. Okay. Which is kind of high floor, and then it kind of got whistled So Samson did make a play. I did not see Puka running around. Yeah. Yeah, I asked Aaron Roderick about both of those guys. Very interesting. I thought I did see them in the team portion. He said, yeah, they were both going through practice today, and they looked good. So, all the all the guys that are going to be in the team portion. He said, yeah, they were both going through practice today, and they looked good. So, all, all the systems go for Puka Nakua and Samson Nakua as they kind of work their way into the program. And they got big talent. And Samson Nakua, too, looks like he's – a little bit better shape than what he was at Utah. Maybe just from eye glance, I, I need to watch more film you know, from what he did at Utah. But I thought Sam would look be in condition. I thought the entire program, like a lot of guys, were huge. Uh, you know, it was interesting. Kalati said, uh, "You can see some you know, running backs and DBs. You might not know which position they are, and oh, that's a good thing." But I think that, but I think that physically, though, a lot of these guys they look impressive, and uh, you know, there's been more of a focus specifically with individualizing the position groups instead of a broad approach. New to BC work with these guys throughout the entire offseason for the most part. There wasn't much of a break. These guys put in a ton of work this offseason. So I think that was a, a significant dividend paid uh, in that regard. Like Tyler Patty looks, looks impressive. So I, I think that, you know, physically, this team looks to be in, in good shape. Injury-wise, I didn't see really anyone out except for Jock Wilson, the cornerback. He wasn't suited up. Uh, he was on the sideline, which was a little bit of a bummer because I know we talked to General Gilford and he has rave reviews about Jock Wilson, the Juco transfer, who missed all of last year due to an ACL. Uh, he was on the sideline, not suited up. I also saw, um, obviously, before camp, too, uh, Kavika uh, Gagne. Uh, he's out since the season. So, but for the most part, uh, pretty much everyone healthy, personnel wise, newcomers. Uh, Aliyah Miguel, Inoka Miguel, the only ones that, from my understanding, uh, did not show up today. So, uh, everyone else? Here, ready to go, and uh, it's a good thing for you. Two more questions here, Mitch. Uh, any, any play from Cody X, Keanu Hill? I didn't see any action from that. You know, no, I did not. Uh, I saw Keanu Hill. Uh, memory serves. I, I don't know if I saw Cody X. I think I might have. I, I need to go back and look at some more of my notes. But uh, uh, Keanu Hill, or Cody X, has been someone that's been battling a lot of injury. Spring ball, he was kind of limited. And then last year in fall camp, he was making some big time progress. And he got hurt with the foot and just really plagued his entire season. So some lingering issues uh, with injuries could possibly be in play there uh, with Cody S. But, yeah, Cameron Hill is someone that uh, he's another guy. Like, I kind of forget about sometimes just because the, the top end of the roster with Gunner and Puka and Samson, we talk a lot about those guys in the middle. Uh, but then you got guys like Keanu Hill. Chase Roberts saw him out there. Uh, Cody S. It's a big, talented, loaded wide receiver room. That's the best wide receiver room I've seen you have in the independent there. It's really hard for those guys to try for rotation yeah. just because when you've got guys like Neil Powell who were balled out just a media loan, four catches, a touchdown. I mean, if you had to put a yardage on it, it's over 100 yards. All those other catches were intermediate in the middle of the field, 15, 20 yard chunk plays. You guys that are on, maybe we didn't see much of him today, but you know what he can do. It's just going to be hard to crack because when you have that kind of talent, you're going to continue to do what Festus Sataki has done, and that is rotation. And that's the way I think it yeah. should be. When you've got the talent like that, you want them playing the majority of the snaps. So, in my estimation, 
there's really only five spots that are going to see the field barring injury. Yeah, I mean, you look at it last year. Uh, the third wide receiver in terms of snaps was Gunnar Romney, and he had almost 200 more snaps than Brady Conklin, the fourth wide receiver. So Bessie, the last two years, has shown he's going to roll with those three guys and just work them and work them every single snap unless they're completely gassed or they're injured. And Gunnar Romney last year. We're still talking to make some of your questions here on this Facebook Live Viewing Football Camp Kalani Day 1 recap. MSG underscore 78 writes, did you get a look at Dylan Rollins? I, memory serves, I, I don't believe I did. I, I saw it the offense, but I got to go through some of my notes. I just write some of the quick scribbled numbers on some things. I got to make sure. Uh, I can't remember exactly what numbers it is. Maybe 63? I, I got to remember. But Montana Gatorade player, the Dylan Rollins, true freshman, one of the uh, few 2021 signees. Part of the program, I think there's a bright future ahead. Yeah. Oh, here's a good one. How did Zoe look on the outside? He wasn't here, he was in Chicago. Well, you know, I'm getting it. I think we're referring to Lorenzo. Oh, I was like, what are you saying? I got, oh, yeah, like Lonzo Ball. Okay, I got you. Uh, Those look pretty good. Uh, I think it's a good move. Monroe's a Lakers. Our Lakers are old. They're in the retirement home. And, I don't want to, I don't want to add it. I believe you're referring to. Yeah. Uh, um, we're being real. It was just helmets today. You know, other than the offensive line really struggling when Jacob Connor was there with a good breeze, nothing really stuck out to me, um, especially from the defensive back position. I will say we caught up with uh, Nisa Mahe, who's healthy and back and is feeling great. He did mention that Lorenzo Palpe is one of those guys who has had a fantastic summer and it's looking really good. Yeah, some of the defensive line, some guys that just stand out to me. Lopele is how uh, Nice Amahe. Nice Amahe might be as strong, according to Lopele is how as strong as Tyler Thompson. And that's surprising because coming out of West Jordan High School, uh, Nice Amahe was like a weightlifting champion. You go look at West Jordan High's records, he's literally, he's gotten every pretty much weightlifting record they have at West Jordan High. Nice Amahe is strong. And getting him back from that scary brain injury a year ago, paired up with Peyton Haas, who brings a wealth of experience from a season ago. That interior is going to be pretty good. I, you know what? I think Matt, I think one of the things I have this all camp, I said it on CSLSports.com, as somehow, once again, we're in Provo, the sprinklers are coming on again. We have this snack. If you remember on our Cougar Sports Saturday, back in the BYU San Diego State game in the snow, the sprinklers were rolling. Anyway, um, this is not good water conversation. It is no. the, uh, the middle of the day. You want to slow the flow. You to slow the flow. Okay. Uh, uh, nice and uh, uh In Oz, also... Guy that no one's talking about that I think is going to be impactful this year, Earl Tuioti Marin. I'm telling you, he's going to be big time. I, I think I've been saying a lot about him for years. Uh, he's coming into his senior year. He's going to be viewed as a senior. He's looking at this as his final year, even though he's a junior, and even though he signed it back in 2014 when Bronco Mendenhall still had two years left. It's crazy. But Earl is going to be someone that's impactful. And I like what I saw from him. He was part of that uh, first team group, at least what it looked like the first team. Going up against the second string offense. Going against the two sets. Steve Summers. Um, John Nielsen, keep an eye on him, true freshman. He's a name to keep an eye on that I think is going to have maybe compete for playing time this year because you want to keep these bodies fresh along the D-line. John Nielsen. Let's get to a few quick hitters from our notes and observations. Yeah. First one that comes out to me, if you're interested, which I happen to be immensely interested in the safety battle, Chaz Ayu and Malik Moore were the first guys that were out there against the ones in 11 on 11 against Jaren Hall. Um, it's a long way to go there, but I did think it was interesting that Malik Moore got the first snap right behind him. Hayden Livingston was in the mix, so that's kind of the safety position shaping out after day one. Yeah, and another safety tidbit. Ammon Hanneman has the best hair in the group. He's got cornrows. He's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I saw that. I was like, yes, I'm writing that down in my notes. Uh, <laughs> a lot of players do. It's just like The thing about me with fall camp, I like getting into the minutia for all you diehard fans out there. So like random things like players doing unique haircuts, like the the cornrows, uh, a bunch of players shave their heads, like old school, throwing it back to Kalani's day when freshmen would shave their heads. I didn't see any of that. Like there was, there was a certain time yesterday, but guys like Tyler Batty just pretty much going buzz cut, Gunnar Romney going to buzz cut. Like I was kind of surprised by that because Gunnar Romney, he's like the, the pretty boy, he looks like all good. Like ladies love him. Like boy, he's, he's buzz cut. Like inner childhood me is like, yes, an attractive man just shaved his, just did the buzz cut. Like it is a respected man. I want the buzz cut. I, women don't, but uh, from first grade to like ninth grade, Mitch Harper had a buzz cut religiously. <laughs> that was my life. And then my wife, I met my wife, uh, and she's a stylist, and she's like, stop 
the bus and we're going to turn everybody back as an adult, too. Anyway, um, let's see. I got one. Okay, what do you got? Green jerseys have been retired. So, <laughs> yes. so when you're seeing a footage of the later today experience, it's a good one. Quarterbacks are in foil, so we got the, I guess that's the do not touch color of camp. Is royal blue. Yeah, and, and to, add, to add, build off of that, or piggyback off of that, in the words of Zoom call. Um, Aaron Roderick, no, said no contact at all for these quarterbacks. None. They're not going to go live at all. No contact. Doesn't want them to get hit at all. And, you know, he was asked, is that a little bit of a worry for Jaron Hall, who hasn't been hit in a year and a half? And he's like, no, it's not a big deal. So I love his comments, too, where he was like, someone asked him, how good is it going to feel? I think it was Dave McCann, actually. How good is it going to feel to take that first hit? He's like, I don't want to take any hits. <laughs> I'm like, that's, yes, that's right. You don't want to take any hits. So I don't have a problem with that one whatsoever. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to Keenan Ellis at cornerback. He was all over Chris Jackson on a ball. Uh, it was a throw in the back end of the end zone. Uh, Baylor Romney threw it. A little bit of an underthrown ball, uh, but Keenan Ellis looked pretty good. I think he might be one of the starters. I think as of right now at the cornerback spot. So Keenan Ellis uh, was all over Chris Jackson. And Chris Jackson does the wide receiver. We didn't talk about like He's the guy that uh, I think is going to have an impact too. So uh, a lot to get to. Uh, we'll have more content, of course, on KSLSports.com. I think we're going to wrap it up right now. I hope all of you enjoyed this. If you did, uh, give us a thumbs up, a subscribe, whatever it may be. And uh, make sure to follow Matt and I on Twitter and social, KSL Sports, KSLSports.com. Download the KSL Sports app uh, presented by University Federal Credit Union. And we'll be back whenever the next media availability is.